Number 30, letter A. What is the effect on the period of a pendulum if you double its length? All right, so for letter A, we want to look at the formula for a pendulum. It says that the period of a pendulum's oscillation, aka the time it takes for one swing of a pendulum, will equal 2 pi multiplied by the square root of the length of that pendulum's arm divided by g. So the question is asking, what happens if we double the length here? How will the period change? Okay, so basically all you have to do here is we can simply just plug in a value of 2 in for, because that will represent a doubling of the length, we can simply plug in a value of two into this fraction. All right, so if I plug in a value of two, just put it over one, the, the, the g does not matter at all, okay? You can just put it over one, that's not a problem. And basically, but keep it under the square root. So the whole thing is that this is really the relationship, and let me just bring this down. This is the real relationship between the doubling of the length and the period. Okay, that if you double the length of the pendulum's arm, the period will then go up by a factor of the square root of 2, which is about 1.14, uh, excuse me, 1.41. All right, so this essentially is how the period will be affected. That means that if the length were to go up by 2, then the period would go up by a factor of 1.41. Okay, you double, you double the length, you get an increase of 40% basically in terms of the period. All right, and then if it asks for triple or half, you know, you would do the same procedure. Just plug in the value of three or half would be, have been a half there and, and then take the square root. So that takes care of letter A. And then letter B, it says, what, uh, what is the effect on the period of a pendulum if you decrease its length by 5%? Now, percents always are a little, right, the, could be a little confusing, but why don't we do it this way? So again, we're gonna use the same formula, that the period of oscillation uh, for a pendulum is equal to two pi multiplied by the square root of the length divided by g. So we can basically ignore kind of everything here except for just the L, all right? Because we're just trying to figure out how, how, how L changes, how does that affect T, okay? So actually what I'll do, let me just simplify this even a little more. So T will be equal to two pi, uh, excuse me, T will be equal to simply the square root of L. Now this is not a true statement, but in terms of proportionally speaking, this is fine, all right? Um, so the length will now decrease by 5%. Well, how do we, how do we put that into a math, you know, math speak? Do we write T is equal to square root of 0.5? Or do we write T is equal to the square root of 0.95? Well, what does it mean to decrease something by 5%? Well, pretend you have an item that costs $100 and it's going to be 5% off. What are you going to pay? Probably say, oh, that's easy, 95. Well, sure, you're going to pay $95, right? So the question is now what, per, you know, if we were to kind of think about this, well, this is the initial price, all right? And then this is the final price. So what percent of the final price is 95 of the initial price of 100? So that's actually 95%, right? So 95 over 100, that's gonna be equal to 0.95, and I can multiply that by 100, and that would be 95%. So essentially, a 95, if I could phrase this in two ways, $95 would be the total you would pay if you got a 5% discount on $100. In other words, what I can say is that the final price you would pay will be 95% of the initial price. I'm saying the same thing, just in a different way. Now, the value we have to plug in then for the length is the second way I explained it. That the you have to plug in the percent, the final percent, as related to the initial value. Meaning, ninety-five dollars is what percent of a hundred dollars? Ninety-five percent, or aka 0.95. So that's the value that has to get plugged in here. Okay. Just like the doubling over here. When we said double, that's easy. But for some reason, when we start talking about decrease by 5%, it becomes confusing. Right? This doubling here would have been equivalent to an increase of 100%. And try to calculate that, how I based you know, my, my uh, problem off of the 100, and see if you can come up with a similar uh, rationale. All right? So I'm just going to plug this in now. So simply the square root of 0.95, and that's going to be so 0.975. 975. And that's going to be now the uh, the proportional change in the period. So, if the 
If we decrease the length by 5%, right, the period will now be 0.975 of its original value, aka the period will decrease by one minus this, right? So what would that become? That would be about a value of point what? 0.125, right? It would decrease by that percent. Well, that's a decimal, but in terms of percent now, that's going to be, uh, excuse me, no, that would be the, that would be the percent. Whoops, one second. Uh, what's going on? There we go. Okay. So it would essentially, uh, excuse me, that's actually not the right value. I'm just thinking, sorry, I'm distracted. I'm trying to read a text message at the same time doing this problem. So probably not a good idea, but the answer here is going to be, sorry, 0 0.01, uh, excuse me, 0 0.025. Okay. So essentially now what happens is if I were to convert this into percent, it would be decreased by 2.5%, right, of its original value. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. So guys, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. Please remember to subscribe. We'll see you next time. Take care.